Hi, and welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney. I actually work right here in Westboro at Myra O'Connell. Uh, but this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary, uh, and their goal, which is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's Westboro, that means right here. So the question is, if you're like Frank and Mary, you want to stay right here, who are the people you know, need to know? What are the programs you need to know about in order to stay right here in Westboro, like forever? So Shelby Marshall is my wonderful co-host who has been finding great guests for us just all the time for a long time now we've been together for quite a while uh but we've got a guest that you know everybody uses the line right oh but everybody knows this guest you know so it's very exciting uh shelby whom do we have on today sure well of course we have um, alma dimash she is the director of the senior center uh she is no stranger certainly to many of our viewers uh, nor to frank and mary um they go way back she's like so, gone to she's known frank and mary and their mother you know, right. and, right. okay, uh, okay, <laughs> let's, you know, I'm, I, I know I got my Medicare card on my birthday in May, but let's not get carried away here. <laughs> we'll get carried away. All, right. All right. Well, I didn't say you knew, their, I didn't say you knew their grandmother. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sadly, I can actually say that we do have some seniors who come here that I did know their parents. Right. So. Well, that's a, that's a compliment to your longevity and how many years you've been working in service for the town and, and uh, all the residents. So um, uh, as um, our viewer, many of our viewers may know, but we, all, we, we always hope we have new uh, viewers. Um, Alma has been uh, the director of the Senior Center for many, many years, and uh, we wanted to have her back. We had her on um, in the middle of ugh, COVID, um, but now that that is uh, squarely in the rear view mirror and uh, masks are off, um, we wanted to have Alma back to talk about what's happening at the Senior Center, how are things reopening, what are the plans, you know, really for the next uh, couple of months. So Alma, welcome. And uh, I know you've got a whole list of things you want to talk to us about. So uh, welcome. Well, we are very excited to be actually opened and fully functioning um, for the most part. Um, we have a lot of a lot of our instructors are back. Some of them are waiting till the fall. Um, but I hope by September we'll be fully up and running with all the good all the good things we had before and some new things. Um, we have been um, we've been busy around here. Um, it has it's just been really great to see people in the building, um, cribbage players and pool players and um, the Zumba classes and the knitting and crocheting ladies and it's it's been wonderful. Um, so there are some things that we are. Um, certainly want to mention right out of the gate. Um, the Senior Center is a cooling center for the town. Um, we've been here um, till seven o'clock the last two nights, and I imagine I'll be here tonight at least that long. Um, even if I don't have company, I have managed to get a lot of work done and quiet. Um, but we are here. Um, please don't sit and suffer at your house. We don't care what, you know, you don't have to get dressed up to come here. Just come sit. We've got TVs. We've got games. We've got puzzles. We've got cribbage boards. We've got a pool table. We've got, you know, movies. We've got all sorts of things here. So just come and stay cool. Um, hang out with us for a little while, visit, um, but please don't sit home and suffer in this heat because it, it will do you in quickly. Um, yeah, and Alma, helpful. to that end, since this is a taped show just in general for folks that are watching, um, maybe by the time you're seeing a show, you're like, wow, it's 60 degrees out, why is there a cooling <laughs> center active? But the, the point here really is that um, the senior center has historically been a cooling center. Okay. And so, um, if you ever have any questions, uh, we'll make sure that we have the senior center phone number that Aiden, our, our um, technical support person here from Westboro TV, puts up so folks can call the senior center and ask for the hours. But if, if you have any needs, uh, but certainly as it relates to uh, the, during the summer months, um, you know, get, finding a cool spot, please don't hesitate to call our senior center as well as our library often function as those. So yeah, we, we were trying to decide the other day if because we already had our 
had 11, or will have had by the time today's over with 11, um, over 90 days in, in June, if it was going to rain, uh, snow in, you know, August, because who knows these days, but um, no, we're here every day, whether the town opens us as a, officially as a cooling center or not, we're here. Um, like I said, we're happy to get you. If you can't get here by yourself, we do have the buses on the road, we'll come get you, and we'll get you home too, I won't make you walk, so. Um, so that's that's happening all summer. Um, the other part is that we are very excited. We're going to do um, our Tuesday night programs um, starting the week after um, Fourth of July. So it'll be um, July thirteenth, and um, it's always food and fun and music and a lot of laughs. And uh, we'll we'll keep you here. Um, there was one one opening in the oh and the. July and August newsletters are here. They're, Daisy's working on them now. They're headed out today. Um, but we had, um, and we've, you know, we've got some great entertainment. We're starting, Dennis Fenton's going to start us off with one of his sing-alongs. Everybody always enjoys that. Um, we've got um, a group called The Real Deal coming in the following week. We've got the police department, the community policing um, detachment is going to be doing their um, bingo um, police bingo they're bringing prizes I'm curious but I'm on vacation that week so um, the flashback band will be here Phil Kittredge is going to come talk about um, the he's been doing a great project doing um, restoring glass negatives of different things in the town and if you have a chance to go into the fire station see a couple of them they're awesome he's going to talk about that project we have um, P.E. James coming in on the 17th to entertain, and then we end on July, I mean, August 24th, rather, with the um, Westboro Fire Department cookout, which everybody loves, and um, I can tell you that the, our uh, fire personnel are very excited to have back this year, so that's um, that's our lineup for that. The well, other... Alma, um, quick question for you, so I know you showed up the senior scene, so that's a, for those folks that may not be familiar, that's a printed newsletter, but it's also available online correct or yes. the, there's a calendar how do people get to that you can get it through the town's website or you can get it through um, lpi who is our publisher either way um, when it's published it goes out you can you can set it up through the town and through lpi that they'll immediately email it to you if you want it um, um, i know we have quite a few um, people who get subscriptions. And sometimes it's people's kids who want to be able to say, hey, mom, why don't you go up to the senior center on Tuesday and do yep. whatever? So um, it's a, that's a great resource for families. So. And Alma, do you, do, I, I don't recall, does the senior center, do you mail the um, um, uh, monthly newsletter to folks if they request it or people have to go to the town hall or the city center? No, nope, you can pick it up in about 50 different places in town or we will mail you a copy. Um, okay. That's actually what's going on right now in the other room. Okay. Um, it's $6 a year for the to pay for the postage and we'll mail it to you every month. Okay, okay. but lots of places around town. I know the library, town hall, senior center, Lots of places uh, uh, carry. Oh, that. the grocery stores, the banks, the churches, a lot of the some, well, a lot of the restaurants. Some of the restaurants, um, doctors' offices. It's it's all over the place. Great. And this month Thank it's you. blue. So. Yep. Um, I try to make it a different color every month so you can tell the difference. So. <laughs> Um, the one, uh, one little caveat to all this. So because we're open on Tuesday nights during those, um, seven weeks, we will close at one o'clock on Fridays after lunch is served. Um, however, um, if it's, you know, hot and the town will stay, will stay open, that's not a problem. And the other good thing is that if you are coming to the senior center for a program or for cooling or whatever, there's no charge if you ride the minibus during the summer, during July and August. So. Um, we're oh, free rides. Right. All right. Yeah. I like yeah. that. So um, we'll be continuing dinner at the back door in July and August. We'll be continuing grab and go lunches. And then starting on July, uh, the first Friday in July, which is the second. Oh, my goodness. That's Friday. Um, we'll be actually serving um, congregate lunch here at the um, at the senior center. Um, you need to make your reservation by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning or Thursday morning um, and um, lunch will be served at 11.45. So we'll be Great. doing So you guys are in full swing. Um, do you, um, 
anticipate any trips this summer? I know that it, historically that's been something folks have looked forward to, but I know, you know, even on the scheduling side, sometimes things have become quickly booked. What, what's going on there? Well, now that you mention it, <laughs> we actually have two baseball trips. I know we have a lot of baseball fans here in Westboro. Um, we have a trip on Friday evening, July 30th, up to see the Worcester Bravehearts. We've been up to see them several times over the last few years. Um, and that's a great game. Um, those are college kids and baseball's, st baseball's still in its purest form with them. Um, that game's at 6.30. It's the night that the Worcester Men of Song will be there and they'll also be fireworks afterwards. So um, you'll be leaving here about five o'clock, five, five, 15, and you should be home around 10 and um, everybody can enjoy that. And then- well, that sounds like a great outing. Yeah, well, I know I know somebody in your house already wants a ticket. So I, I'm and then, sure. um, the Worcester, we have a, a trip up to see the Worcester Red Sox on August 11th. It's a 1215 pitch. We'll be leaving here at 11. Um, that's very exciting. And then we're very, very happy, happy, happy. Um, we'll be doing our annual um, main claim bake trip on Thursday, August 19th. Bus will be leaving here at nine. We get home sometime between five and six, six thirty, depending how bad the traffic is coming home. Um, and the great thing about that is that um, the the cost of the lobster did not go up this year, so the tickets are still fifty dollars for the day. So, um, and is that a, that's at, a trip to like the York area? Is that yeah, correct? we stop at Stonewall Kitchen. We have um, the clam bakes at Foster's Down East Clam Bake. We go to York Village, we stop at When Pigs Fly, and um, we head home. So it's a great day. It's not allowed to rain. I don't allow it. Um, <laughs> but everybody everybody has a good time, and, and uh, we've, we've, uh, we look forward to this trip every year. Last year was very disappointing for a lot of people. So I, th I think that gets... I was going to say, I think that gets to the key. It's, it's so wonderful that it just feels so normal, you know? The things that you're talking about which would always be, oh yes, and of course we're gonna do this again, you know, is suddenly like, oh great, you know, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do it, you know. It, it, which, it, which just, it just sounds so wonderful, it's just wonderful. Well, I think I really wanted to concentrate this summer on just getting people back to back together and back to kind of doing the normal things that they do. Um, Chief Laurie started um, this past month in June, he started his breakfast with the chief and we'll be doing that in July and August. Um, like I said, lunch, we've got Zumba coming, our classical music instructors back. So it's a lot of the normal things that we do that I just want people to get back and, and um, you know, starting to feel comfortable being here. There are, there are not mask restrictions at the center unless you have not been fully vaccinated. We ask that you wear a mask, but other than that, um, there's hand sanitizer all over the place and um, the building's cleaned. So you shouldn't feel uncomfortable being here. And uh, we just, we're, we're so happy to have everybody back, so. Um, for folks uh, going on the trip, how, how does it work? So for folks that may need a wheelchair or a rollator, um, if you need a wheelchair to walk kind of long distances, particularly I think about like the game or getting into different places, um, how does that work? Do you have folks that can help facilitate that or at least on site the facility has staff? So if you, if you need to have someone with you for that reason or whatever. If you need to have an aide or a family member with you, they are welcome to come. Okay. Um, we certainly um, are the bus drivers that we have from Foxy Travel have been amazing. They'll, you know, fold up your your rollator or your walker or whatever and tuck it underneath and get it out before you get off the bus. Um, the only thing we ask is that you're able to get on and off the bus by yourself. There, there is such a thing as wheelchair accessible motor coaches, but they are very hard to come by. Um, and um, I can't always guarantee, and I hate to say no to somebody, but I, the, I don't know, we don't always have access. Foxy does not have one in their fleet. Um, I think the last time we got one, it came from Norwood. Um, and uh, it's just, it's not easy to do. And I, like I said, I hate to say no to anybody, but if we can figure out how to get you on the bus, you're welcome to go, so. So Alma, if in the rare instance that maybe someone uh, needed assistance, could not actually get up on the bus, but they had a family member that could bring them to the event and sort of meet the bus, is that 
Could that be arranged? Oh, yeah. Could they just call you with this, you know, and arrange that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, we've done that with, we actually have a family. It's interesting. We have a family here in town who has a daughter who's in a wheelchair and we will take her on our mini bus um, and they meet her there at, you know, oh, the Christmas yeah. tree shop or whatever, or sure. we have another man in town who meets his sister for lunch every so often. So, I mean, it, you know, we, we try very hard to accommodate as best we can, as much as we possibly can, because sure. everybody deserves to have a day out. So. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Um, so pivoting a little bit, um, what do you see sort of as, as sort of put your director hat on, I don't know if you ever take it off, but what do you, what do you see as sort of the upcoming needs, um, you know, um, as it relates to the town, um, the senior center, just kind of changing, evolving needs, maybe things that we've learned from the pandemic, what's on the horizon? Uh, what did we learn from the pandemic? Everybody's vulnerable. Um, I think that I mean, the, the I actually had a Zoom meeting a couple months back with the um, Civic Club, I believe it was, and they asked me what if I could, you know, have anything in Westboro, what would it be? And I said, I would love it if some one of the multitudes of health organizations in this area would open a senior daycare center here in Westboro, um, not in Northboro, not in Framingham, not in Marlboro, right here in Westboro, because there is such a need for that here, um, and and it it gets bigger all the time. Um, I think that uh, as we're seeing the population in town grow a little bit older and then opening the new um, over 50, well, kind of over 55 apartments over by the lake and all of that. I mean, and there's, I mean, when you think about it, the Highlands has been there almost 10 years now. Um, you know, the Willows has been there a little bit longer than we've been here, which is 33 years. Um, that, I mean, so there's, there's Walker Meadow and Orchard Hill and Stagecoach and all these places. I mean, these people, they, they've now been there for a while. So people are aging in place. Um, and I think that we will be looking at needing more resources so that people can continue to stay here in Westboro. Like Arthur said, people want to die in their houses and be, you know, this is their home and they want to be here forever. And I don't blame them, quite frankly. Um, I, I've been getting every, every day in the mail, I get something from some other realtor in the Blackstone Valley who would love to be able to sell my house. And I'm, sure. I'm not selling my house, right. so, um, but they want to sell my house. So, um, and I think people get bombarded with that too, but I, I know a lot, I mean, that's their home and that's where they want to stay. So we'd like to be yeah. able to offer them resources I'm, to be able to do that. I'm curious in your circle of uh, professionals, um, do you know offhand if they're, and this, this is my selectman tap, but do you know offhand if there are communities uh, that have uh, town or municipal sponsored daycare programs? Some of the bigger centers on the South Shore I know have them and some out in Western Mass, but not any in this area. I mean, none of us really has the facility size for it. Um, or the staff for it. Um, I know that, um, you know, Marlboro built a new center, but it's, it's not, certainly not big enough to accommodate that, um, as well as did um, Northboro and, and Hopkinton. But um, I know, uh, uh, trying to think, I want to say Braintree or Brockton, one of those towns down there, and some of the ones out in Western Mass do have um, adult day health centers. So well, I know, I know certainly one of the things, oh, sorry, if there's just one comment, there's, I know one of the things all is certainly acutely aware of, and, and some folks in town may be aware is that um, there's this ongoing dialogue of uh, developing uh, an intergenerational community center. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, is, is that the right path? Do we make improvements to the senior center? I'm not here to kind of offer an opinion on either, but I do think to your, to your point, as we think about forward-looking plans, um, these are some of the questions we should be asking. You know, so do you build a facility with the understanding that there is this need, there will continue to be this need, this the demographic supports it in terms of aging population to uh, have programs like that, but then can you support and staff them, right? You know, um, you know, is there is there a will attack? You know, and is that the role of the town? I mean, we don't we don't have 
that's a different show, perhaps. Yeah, um, it is. But no, I think, I mean, I think that certainly, you know, it might be something that the town looks at, but but opening an adult day health center, whether it's privately owned or owned by the town, I mean, it's a whole other animal as far oh, yeah. as regulate. I mean, you know, shall be working in home care. It's there's yeah. a whole other set of rules and regulations for that. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not sure. I think that, you know, I, I personally don't have any issues with um, an intergenerational recreation center. I think that's great, but I think there's still going to always be a need for the senior center to be here to do what we do not just the social services piece of it but also the entertainment and the education and the that part of it that's very important and um i will say that um and no offense taken but there are a lot of seniors who just don't like any other kids than their own so mm -hmm. you got to be careful with that too sure. um it's sure. it's you know it, in theory it's a great idea but not always in practice and I've seen sure. it not do well in some other communities so when they thought that was a great idea so, sure. um, so Anna, I was just I was just curious when you're talking about a, a like a, a, a day center like what what would you imagine happening at the day center like it, are you thinking a place like well I'm on the board at better at better day the one that was pleasant trees in Marlboro now mm -hmm. that's for a nonprofit do you think that that's that is the the kind of place that you that you're looking at? Do you think you you're, you're looking at something that has other kinds of services? Because I think that's it is really important, and I think and I, and I really well, I've really come to believe too that every community should have one. That that it, it's very much about being able to have folks who are local being able to go to a local place and have those services really important. But what what are you thinking when you think of that kind of uh, that kind of center? I think a better day or pleasantries when Tammy had it. I think that, you know, the, the model at aging well, where there's a place that, you know, folks can go where they have some of their medical things attended to um, showers and baths are given because sometimes the spouse or family member doesn't have the ability to do that um, somewhere where there's activities and, and, um, you know, whether it's strictly for patients suffering from Alzheimer's or any form of dementia, or whether it's just an age, you know, age related issues. Um, I know that years ago, there used to be one here over in um, where Julio's Plaza is. There was one here, it was run by one of the VNAs from Worcester um, and it did very, very well here in Westboro. Um, I remember a lot of people from here that used to go there two or three times a week or five days a week. Um, yeah. And family, you know, families need respite too. And to, to offer, to be able to offer your loved one someplace to go during the day where they can, you know, be amongst their peers and, and get some attention and get a couple good meals and um, play cards or do some physical therapy or some occupational therapy or whatever, um, and then give the caregivers a little bit of a rest. Um, that's a blessing that's priceless. Just a blessing. And as you say, it allows everybody it allows the Frank or Mary who has issues and also the Frank or Mary who's taking care of the person who has issues mm -hmm. and also to have something that is really close. Cause I, I know one of the, so I was at, I was at one of the better day meetings where we, we actually have somebody there now who's coming from Somerville because the, the number of day programs, the, you know, the closest day program that we kind of know about is in like Wayland and mm -hmm. it, it's, it's it, it, they're far away. And, and this is all about the, the convenience of it, but as you say, both for the senior, who a lot of times really wants to be in that kind of program, because when you're in, you're in the program and you're with other folks who've got some memory problems, it's a joke, you know, it's like, it's not like you're sticking out, you know, it's just part of the fun, you know, mm -hmm. everybody's, every, you know, can say the same, you no know, knock, knock joke a thousand times, <laughs> but, but in, and, and if you're, and if you are the, the, the caregiver, then it also is that place from which you build, you, you end up with a network of people who are other caregivers who that you you can be really close to it. So it, it's a really, I think it's a wonderful, I think your point is well taken and every place should have, that every place should have one. You know? I mean, I have a family member who now sadly is in a nursing home, but um, he had dementia and really struggled some, but his wife also struggled. Um, 
And if she had had access to someplace like that, where he could go a couple of days a week, just so she could breathe a little bit um, and he could get some attention and some, you know, um, like a, some, what's the word I want to use? Um, you know, entertainment and stimulation yeah. and all of that. I mean, that would have been so good for both of them, but unfortunately there wasn't anything like that around where they lived. So, and, and, you know, that is so much of it, Alma, what you said, that that ability to breathe, that that ability for the caregiver whew, to just have a moment where it's not constant, because it is when you are one to one with someone and, and it changes that relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, you go from being spouses to my job is to care for you and maintain the house and do everything else. And um, you do need that you need that break. And some people are not comfortable in having people come into their home. And, and when, even when they have someone coming into their home, it might not feel like a break because like now I, I got to leave to go do something and I can't just, you know, sit and have a cup of coffee because he or she is still there. Right. Well, no, so or just go get your hair cut or go, you know, yeah. run to the grocery store, yeah, or just, go, no, no, no. And, buy some birthday cards. I mean, you can't, right. it, not manageable so right right and and the ability to your point for the individual who is aging and has some particularly cognitive issues um, which i think is kind of tends to be more of a concern although certainly physical uh, ailments as well but uh, for them to be engaged and to for them just sort of you know not just sleep all day right you know for them to be engaged and entertained and then kind of you know um uh, come home and feel like they were productive in their day and uh, it's, it's important. So no. more to come on I, that. I was going to say, I always use this line that my sister used because her husband was actually at Pleasantries, the, the, you know, back when Tammy ran it and we, we loved it. We just loved it. You know, I recommended a lot of people over there, but one day she, she picked him up and said, so, 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 so how was your day? How, how are you feeling? Oh, I feel terrific. What did you do today? I have no idea. <laughs> the, that was the point made no difference what's the what's the who cares you but know? it was right. still a good day it was a exactly. great day it was a great day now so so Alma, my, one of my jobs is 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 actually to keep track of time and i'm looking at the clock and i want to make sure that we're not running over and at the end of our shows i try to ask shelby to put on her select person hat and say so what's new is there any big thing that folks should be kind of concentrating on be, just before we end the show but so shelby any anything uh, that should people you know, should look at right now? Uh, there, there's always stuff going on. I guess um, I would encourage folks. Um, first of all, Alma, thank you very much for being on today. Oh, you're We're welcome. Really excited My pleasure. Uh, that the Senior Center is opening up. Um, um, I um, have actually started to receive some requests from folks for content for our shows offer. So it's very exciting. So I do want to make sure our friend Aiden puts up the contact us with questions or ideas. Yep. Um, we're going to take a couple weeks off throughout the summer because um, we're tired, right, Arthur? We've been doing this week after week as much what? as I love it. Who, me? Right. <laughs> um, but we're going to take a couple weeks off. We'll have some shows here and there that will uh, be new shows, um, and then we'll uh, hit the ground running um, again in September. But I want to thank everyone for uh, watching. Please send us your ideas because the show is good because you find value in it. And uh, we certainly have fun doing it no matter who the guest is, so. And we get great guests. We, we get do. great guests. We get Alma Dimash live, live <laughs> from the Senior Center, Alma Dimash, right? So this was a lot of fun. Thanks a million, Alma, for for, um, for coming on. This was really great. Thank you, Shelby, for doing this. This has been, especially during the pandemic, I think this has been a help to a lot of people for a lot of time. And I think everybody, including us, is looking forward to just taking a breath. You know, mm -hmm. you just, get the summer and you take a rest. So thank you, Alma. Thank you, Shelby. Uh, thank you folks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. As Shelby has said, we're gonna take some time off in the summer, but we wanna be ready in the fall. And we know that a lot of people are actually interested in what the shows could be and also in coming on. So let us know, let us know. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment or the reruns of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you.